When we go online, we reveal things about ourselves. Some people might say, I don't have anything to hide. Why should I worry? We're living in an age of digital technologies that in large part are controlled by uh, private companies, sometimes individuals controlling those companies, and their interests do not always align with those of the rest of humanity. People are definitely more aware of the idea that certain organizations have more and more information. But in general, it's not fully understood to the, to the level and extent of how, what that data is. We've jumped too soon and too fast on an understanding of data as an asset that is subject to property rights. Oh, yes. <laughs> I am Sylvie Delacroix, a professor in law and ethics at the University of Birmingham. My name is Toshi Anders Hu. I'm the director of the Emerging Media Lab at Institute for the Future. I'm Joe Rosinski, a technologist and futurist at Thomson Reuters. The world has been dramatically changed by digital technology and communication technologies over the last several decades. The use of digital technologies and interactive technologies and increasingly data-driven technologies is there's been kind of a, a, a deal with the devil, as it were. Lots of things appear free and magical, and yet we've been providing our personal information by using these technologies. We leak data on a daily basis and it makes us vulnerable. The speed with which I type on my keyboard will reveal certain things about my state of mind. The way I shop online will reveal all sorts of things about my status, my wealth, etc. Information is being collected about us, um, not just to collect and create a profile, uh, but in inevitably to influence us. The companies that are involved in digital advertising are very interested in tracking your response and following you throughout your day, in fact, your life. So I think that's one of the downsides that the kind of the whole world is just starting to recognize and governments and regulatory agencies are starting to realize the implications of that. If you look at the legal instruments we have to manage data, very often those legal instruments are focused on individuals and individual rights. And there's very little in the way of tools to empower groups to take charge or to take agency over their data. And I think that's one of the key issues we're facing today is that data actually becomes valuable when it is aggregated. And that means we have to be thinking more about groups and rights of groups. People have been a little bit off guard with how much data they've consumed and then what happens to that data. Now when we're seeing the transition to, well, now I can own my own data, everything that I have, I personally have ownership of, it sits in my digital wallet, which I have the key to, so I have the password to. And within that, I'm then able to flip the script, I hate saying that, but to flip the script on this idea that now I can actually charge for the data that I own. They sit in my digital wallet. I'm actually able to lend those pieces out to marketers for the next 30 days. Once that period of time is over, it's expired. They no longer have access to my information. I own my, my information, but I got paid for that period of time. That's the future of leveraging this and, and putting the power back into, the, into people, having ownership of their own information. I think those decentralization technologies, so whether you talk of crypto or various forms of personal data stores, etc., are important precisely as tools for decentralization. The generalized term of decentralization is thrown about quite wildly, um, and it is, again, used to, to mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. Uh, are we talking about decentralization of the technology itself, where data is actually stored or uh, databases are stored in a decentralized way? Or are we talking about decentralized wealth or power? But I do think that the problems they're trying to address are ones that need to be addressed. Identity, uh, governance, privacy. This idea of decentralization where you can actually put the power or money into the hands of the populace is something that is extraordinarily powerful, but it is also threatening. To governments. It shouldn't be. It should be something that they can find a balance to. There's a comfortable medium between the two that allow for governments to work with people so we can actually get to the point where this technology is better leveraged for the common good.